Um, just some hints about the ways you might want to change the scatter plot. You know, when you're doing this for your final reports, you may want to change the uh, the point icon, like he did in that video. Change it to a different colour, or maybe fill it with black, so it's a big black blob. Um, and you can also give colour to different subsets. So you may have um, a correlation. In, in, in his case, it was it was women. Um, uh, life expectancy, but say it was all people, then what you might want to show is different coloured dots for men and women in the, the scatter plot. And you can do yeah, that. You can assign colours depending upon some other variable. So have a go at, at trying that. Um, it's interesting to look at that because sometimes you find that overall the data may show no strong relationship, no strong correlation, but the subsets might show that. You might spot something in the, the correlation that the subset has that the overall um, chart doesn't. Okay, so use Chart Builder to, to have a go at that. Okay, I've used the term correlation a lot here because that's what we're looking at in the end. Um, and correlation is measured by a few statistics. In particular, if it's a normal distribution, we can use Pearson's R. So we can measure the strength of a correlation by using Pearson's R. And here's the output you get from uh, uh, um, doing a, a very simple um, correlation on, on, uh, in SPSS. Um, what you'll get is the two variables. Here's age. And here's number of GCSEs going back to the first one I used. Um, so there's two variables here. And you have in this box here, and it's reflected in this box here as well. So there are two, always two boxes um, showing the same numbers. If you, you can correlate more than one variable at once. So you can correlate three against three or, or four against four or whatever. And in that case, you'll get lots more columns and rows. Each of them will always duplicate everything twice. So there'll be a diagonal line of, 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 of no correlations here, of ones uh, you can ignore. And then either side of that, there'll be a set of boxes. So just ignore the fact that it appears twice. It's just the way it's laid out. But what you can see, I've, in the case of the top right one, I've circled the actual correlation figure itself. So in this case, Pearson's correlation for that relationship you saw on the scatter plot of number of GCSEs versus the age of the, the student, the correlation comes out as, was it minus 0.415? Now, I need to tell you what that means and what, how to interpret that. So let, let's go on to have a look at that. What do are, what are those different values mean? First of all, it was negative. Um, but if it were positive, positive correlations means as x increases, so does y. So as you go increase across the, the, the left-right axis, it increases on the up-down axis, the y-axis. So in other words, as these points here, these are low values on this variable, there'll be low values here. These values here are high values on this variable, and they're also high values on that variable as well. And that's called a positive correlation. In fact, in this case, I've calculated the, the correlation value here, it's uh, 0.0.7. The correlation value itself varies between 0 and 1. So a correlation of 1 is a perfect relationship. A correlation of 0 is absolutely no relationship at all. And a number in between is some kind of strength of relationship. And obviously, the closer to 1, the stronger that is. 0.7 is, is fairly close. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment what that means, how to interpret that. Um, but it's a fairly one, uh, very close to, to one. So this is a, a strong positive correlation because as one increases, so does the other. A negative correlation simply means as one increases, the other decreases. And actually, if you think about it, all you've done is simply switch one of the variables round so it goes the other way around. Um, and actually, there's, there's nothing in it. It doesn't mean that much. It just simply says how you displayed your variables or how you set them up. There's nothing in the world that, that, that correlates, that, that, sorry, that uh, coincides with that minus sign. It's simply a, 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 a factor that shows how you've set things up. Of course, some things, you know, it does matter that it's a negative correlation. It, sometimes it, you know, as things get smaller, something else gets bigger. Um, you know, that, that, that kind of matters in the real world. But, but the negative sign can be just an arbitrary reflection of how you set up the variable. 
In this case, it's the same uh, strength of relationship, 0.7, but it's a negative one. So that, that example I had from SPSS just here, minus 0.415, um, is showing that, it, that as one increases, the other decreases. So what that's saying is as the number of GCSEs increases, the age decreases. And remember, I, I kind of found that to some extent. The more GCSEs were, were held by the younger people. So the smaller age had more GCSEs, hence the negative correlation. OK, what about the strength of the correlation? Well, here's a stronger correlation. This is positive again, back to the, the first example. Positive correlation, as one increases, so does the other. But it's a stronger one. The points are closer to a straight line now. Not perfectly so, but closer. And in this case, the correlation figure comes out as 0.9. So it's pretty close to 1. On the other hand, a weak correlation. Again, there's a tendency just about for, you know, as one thing increases, so does the other. But they're scattered so much over the scatter plot that really there isn't a very strong correlation at all. And the, the value you get for this is 0.2. So this is what a 0.2 looks like. There's not much relationship at all. So just looking at the scattergram can immediately give you an idea about whether there is a strong relationship or not, and whether you, when you do the correlation you'll get that strong, that, that, that big figure. So just to summarise those, this is what the interpretation means. R is positive, that's the correlation, the Pearson correlation is positive. It means that as Y increases, so does X, as one variable increases, so does the other. If it's negative, it means as one increases, the other decreases. When the value is near 1 or near minus 1, the minus sign doesn't matter here, then it's a strong relationship um, or correlation. And when it's near 0, then it's a weak relationship between the two. OK, now bear in mind that we have... To, uh, another reason for looking at the, the, the scatter plots is because very often we have some odd relationships, some odd kind of pictures of the data. And I thought I'd share these diagrams with you all of these different diagrams have exactly the same correlation, the same correlation coefficient. So Pearson's R is the same for all of them. But if you look, if you look at the dots, you'll see that the, the relationships are rather different. This one's rather like the ones we've been looking at so far. The, the R is 0.82, a reasonably strong correlation. And as you can see, it's a positive one. So as things increase uh, one, on one variable, it, they increase on the other. This one is the same, but you, if you look more carefully at the plots, you can see that they're actually very, very nicely spread out in a nice curve. So the relationship between one variable and the other is not linear, it's not a straight line, it's a curve. Something else is going on here, something else is happening. And that isn't well captured by this linear regression. So you have to do something else with the data. You can uh, fiddle around with it. I'm not going to be teaching how to do that in these sessions. We're going to rely simply on the, the straight line correlations, but you can fix it. But if you get something like that, if there's a hint of a, of a curve, then you should be using other techniques to do the correlation. This th third one here, you've got a nice, almost a straight line relationship here, and then suddenly you get a point out here somewhere that throws the whole thing out. What's going on there? Well, of course, the immediate suspicion is this outlier here is a mistake. Something's gone wrong. Back to that session I, I had earlier on when I was talking about data entry, that somebody's made a mistake entering the data somewhere. So actually, you've got a nice relationship here, pretty strong relationship, pretty strong correlation, but you've got one point here that's throwing it out, which is actually a mistake. We don't know that for certain. You need to go back to the data and check it. And of course, it might be genuine. There might be something that, that says, actually, not everybody falls into this, this, this simple relationship here. So you've got some genuine data, in which case, of course, you keep it. Uh, you can't throw it away. But the last one is the same, but the other way around. You've got here a, a set of lines of dots showing actually zero relationship. It's showing basically that when they all have the same value on this axis, uh, but different values on this axis. So the, there's no relationship, except that we've got one other point out here that again, probably is an outlier, probably is a mistake, um, but we can't be certain, so you need to check the data about that. So these kind of situations, now I've, I've given you two illustrations here of outliers, one outlier making a difference, but you can also pick up several outliers sometimes in this way. They, they fall outside the normal kind of pattern. 
So looking at scatter plots is a good way of checking your data as well to make sure it all makes sense, you've not made mistakes in entering it and so on. Okay, let me talk a bit more about the interpretation of uh, Pearson's R. Um, R squared, that is squaring the value of R. So R is between 0 and 1, you square it, you still get a value between 0 and 1, but it changes it. R squared, or squaring R, is a measure of degree of variation. In one variable, this is accounted or explained by the variation in the other. So how much of the variation in this thing, in, I don't know, let's say somebody's, uh, you know, the crime rate in a country, how much of the variation in crime rate is explained by the amount of unemployment in the country? Um, and R squared tells you that in, in the percentage term. So it might be it's 0.5, in which case half of the variation uh, is explained by, by that. So what we can do to get some kind of feel for how to interpret the figure R, that the R that we get, the correlation figure, the Pearson's correlation, is simply to square it. So if the R is 0 0.7, 0 0.7, then R squared is 0.49. That's almost a half, not quite, but just under a half. What that means is that half the variation in one variable is explained by the variation in the other. And by implication, therefore, half the variation is explained by other things, things that you're not including in your chart, other things that could have happened, all sorts of other variables that make a difference to, to people and, and our lives and so on. And likewise, the last example, if R is 0.03, <coughs> sorry, uh, 0.3 rather, if R is 0.3, then R squared is 0.09, very, very small, and what that means is only 9% is explained by the correlation. In other words, 91% of the variation is explained by other things that, you're not, that are not included in your model, not included in your two variables. Other things are explaining why, I don't know, the, the, the crime rate or the, uh, the, the people's height or, or whatever is varying. Okay, so it gives you an idea of, of just how much variability. And that's why, in general, we tend to say... Uh, an R of around about 0.7 or greater gives us an interesting, a significant result. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a reasonable correlation. Um, anything less than that, we begin to bit, get a bit jumpy about it. Certainly if it's less than half, we think it, it's not telling us much at all. A, 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 a figure of 0.5, when you square it, is 0.25, and that means that three quarters of the variation is explained by other things. Nothing to do with what's on our chart at all, but other things. So we tend not to give much weight to those. So we tend to focus then on the higher figures for correlations. They're the ones that we really want to get that are interesting, and the others, we, 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 we just discount them. Now, the important thing about correlations is to remember that's not the same as significance. Last week, I talked about the significance of the chi-squared. Um, that is... You know, a, some kind of, of estimate of how likely we are to have got that by chance if we're sampling from a, a wider population. We can do the same with Pearson's R. We can say, you know, we've got a, a subsample taken with a wider population. How likely is it that we got that correlation by sheer chance because of the way we chose the sample? Uh, or how likely is it in the sample, as a, uh, sorry, the population as a whole, that that correlation holds for everybody outside our sample? And that's the significance of the, 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 um, the test. So significance is how likely we get it by chance or not. And on the other hand, there's the actual value of the correlation, which is how strong the relationship is. And you have to remember that in the case of correlation, there's these two things that are going on. Don't confuse them. The problems you get is that very often you'll find, particularly with a large data set, a very large data set with hundreds or maybe thousands of individuals, you will find significant correlations which are very, very small, very, very weak. So you might find a correlation of, say, 0.2, which means just a very small percentage of the variation is explained by whatever you're looking at. Something else is going on. So it's a very weak correlation. But you might find, because your data set is so large, that you get a significant result. You couldn't have got it by chance. But remember, it's not telling you very much. OK, we know it's almost certainly it's, it's there. It is explaining something. But it's not explaining very much because the value is so small. 
So in the case of correlations, in general, we pay much more attention to the actual value of Pearson's R being you know, 0.7 or above, rather than the significance of the, the, the correlation. But you will get both coming up. Okay, so remember that point at the bottom. Size of it more important than its significance. Okay, I said I'd cover how to report correlations. Here's um, an example of that. This is the, um, here's the one we started with, the, the correlation, uh, of our rather kind of poor correlation between uh, the number of GCSEs and, and age, point, uh, minus 0.415. And here's how you might write that up in your report. So in this case, older students in the sample tended to have fewer GCSEs, age correlated with a number of GCSEs, but not strongly. We know that because it's only 0.4. 0.4 squared is, is what, 16% of the variation. It's explained that way. And then you put in brackets the actual values, like we did for chi-squared. In this case, in brackets, Pearson's R equals minus 0.415, N equals 34, P is less than 0.05. And that, that, again, we can read that off of here. This is the two tail significance. There it is there. 0.015, so that's less than 0.05. So it is significant, but it's rather weak, is what we're saying. And in brackets, you might want to add, I'm sorry, not in brackets, in grey at the bottom, I put uh, age accounts for only about 17% of the variation in the number of GCSEs. That kind of reinforces the point that the correlation is not strong, although it happens to be significant in this case. 